Hey there, people. So today I am bringing you my best arrows guide. In fact, I'm going to cover all the arrows in Terraria, and I'm also going to tell you how to get infinite arrows. So uh, the types of arrows that you use can matter quite a lot, actually. There are a total of 16 different types of arrows. 11 are available on all the different platforms. Five are platform-specific, uh, only available on some of the platforms. I'm going to divide this into pre-hard mode and hard mode, and it's roughly in uh, order of how good they are, although truth is that different types of arrows can be good for different purposes. So first of all, your basic arrows, uh, the earliest you can get are the wooden arrows. Uh, the base damage is five if you're on the updated platforms, uh, PC 1.3 and equivalent on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, the base damage is only four if you're on the old gen consoles or on mobile or on 3DS. Um, these arrows have three velocity, so that's your base. And as you can see, wooden arrows, five range damage. Um, they can be found in chests and pots and so on, but they can also be bought from the merchant or crafted from one wood and one stone block at your workbench. So you can actually go down uh, to your workbench uh, or wherever your workbench is, mine happens to be here, and if you go to your workbench, you can see this, you can craft 25 wooden arrows from one wood and one stone block. So that's readily available material, you can make tons and tons of those, and if you want infinite arrows, uh, we're going to get right to that on the updated platforms only, unfortunately, so that's PC, PS4, Xbox One for now, coming to mobile, and uh, when the Switch version comes out, they'll be able to do this. Um, to get an Endless Quiver is what it's called, and I've got one of those right here. Uh, to make an Endless Quiver, which gives you infinite, effectively wooden arrows, uh, you will need four stacks, four full stacks of 999 wooden arrows. So you can either buy those or craft them, uh, and when you have four sets of 999, uh, you can go actually to um, your Crystal Ball. Actually, you can only do this once you're in hard mode, because your Crystal Ball is bought from your wizard NPC who appears at the beginning of hard mode. Um, but once you're in hard mode, you can get the four stacks of 999, go to your crystal ball that you bought from the, the wizard, and craft your endless quiver. So let's just uh, show you. That's actually the only type of arrow that's crafted at the workbench. Um, and there you go. Uh, this is your most basic wooden bow as well. Uh, so you've got one of those here. Mine's even a lazy wooden bow. <laughs> so uh, the bow itself only does four. The arrows do five. So you can see I'm doing like nine or ten if I'm lucky. Uh, eight, actually, a lot of the time. <laughs> and uh, so that's your, your basic wooden arrows with your basic bow. Uh, but there are some other types of arrows that you can get actually quite early in the game. Um, one of those with when you're exploring underground, you can actually get bone arrows. Bone arrows can be bought from the skeleton merchant during certain phases of the moon. They're just a little bit better, uh, whereas the wooden arrows are, are five or four uh, base damage and three velocity. These are six base damage and 3.5 velocity, so they're a very slight improvement, uh, but they're also uh, kind of hard to obtain, so it's kind of not that worthwhile because you have to find the skeleton merchant who is difficult to find to begin with, and then you also have to be in the right phase of the moon to be able to buy those from him. But, so as you can see, it's, it's a slight improvement, and you can see you know, I'm doing a slight bit more damage, but it's actually really easy to get better arrows than that that you can just make any time. Uh, so the first ones that come to mind are the flaming arrows, which uh, all you need is wooden arrows plus torches to make flaming arrows. So they can be crafted almost right at the beginning of the game. You just have to kill a slime to get some, uh, some slime, some gel, to uh, craft torches, and then you just add your wooden arrows with uh, torches to make uh, flaming arrows. So flaming arrows have a base damage of 7 if you're on the updated platforms, or uh, 6 if you're on the old gen or mobile currently. Um, so they have uh, 3.5 velocity, 7 base damage, and can light enemies on fire. They inflict the on fire debuff. Now some enemies are immune to that, but uh, it's still, you know, obviously very helpful. So to make those, you'll need either 5 or 10. Uh, 5 if you're on the old gen or mobile, 10 if you're on uh, the updated platforms, wooden arrows, plus 1 torch. So it's either 5 plus a torch or 10 plus a torch. Uh, depending which platform you're on, and it makes that same number of arrows. So, here we go. You can see it even lights the dummies on fire. 
and it's just a chance to light them on fire. But anyway, that's a that's an easy one that you can make early on, and it's definitely more powerful than your basic wooden arrows. Now, something that gets overlooked actually a fair bit is the frost burn arrows. It's basically an improved, better version of the flaming arrows. Um, the frost burn arrows, and I've got some here, do a base of nine range damage rather than seven, so a couple extra damage. But also, um, they inflict the frost burn debuff. Uh, so it's nine base damage on the updated platforms or it's seven on the not updated platforms um, as opposed to the six on those for the uh, flaming arrows. It's 3.75 velocity, slightly faster, but again, inflicts the frost burn debuff, which is actually twice as powerful as the uh, on fire debuff and also far fewer enemies are immune to it. So to do that, um, to make those, all you need is five or 10, again, five on the pre-update platforms, 10 on the updated platforms, wooden arrows, plus one ice torch. So there you go. And you can see, again, that inflicts frost burn rather than on fire. So those dummies even light, um, well, light, if you want to call it that, uh, they get inflicted with the frost burn debuff. Um, so you you might be wondering how do you craft ice torches to do this so you will need ice torches and ice torches you can occasionally find in chests but if you want to make them you actually just simply need to combine three regular torches plus one ice block which is why i have torches and an ice block here so again flaming arrows 10 wooden arrows and a torch um but i can craft ice torches from three torches and one ice block it it's three torches and it crafts three ice torches and once you do that, actually, I might as well go ahead and do a couple of those. Then you can make the Frostburn arrows. And you don't have to be at a crafting station to do this. For the Flaming Arrows, Frostburn Arrows, Jester's Arrows, you don't actually even need to be at a crafting station. You just take your existing wooden arrows and um, whatever you're combining it with, in this case, the Ice Torch. And it's 10 arrows if you're on the updated platforms, or it's five on the pre-update platforms. And you can, for each Ice Torch that you have, you can make 10 of those. And there you go. So now I have a bunch of those and now I can inflict that debuff and it's uh, eight, I think, damage per second. Uh, let me just see. Yeah, it's eight damage per second that the frost burn does, whereas the on fire does four. So there you go. I think it also lights them on fire or on frost burn a little bit longer than the uh, flaming arrows light them on fire. So there you go. That's actually something you can do very early, basically almost as soon as you get to the snow biome. Uh, you will need to find the ice, which is usually a little more underground compared to the snow, but it's not too hard to find ice. And uh, well, you're gonna probably have a ton of it if you're exploring underground, and that's a really good arrow that you can do very early on with readily available materials. Now, another one that you can do early on as well is the Jester's Arrows, and you'll find these in pots and chests and so on as well, um, but you can craft them too. They do a base of 10 damage on the updated platforms or 9 on the pre-updated platforms, which actually makes them a couple points better um, on the pre-updated platforms compared to the Frostburn. Uh, they do not, however, inflict a debuff. What they do is that they have unlimited piercing, which makes them highly effective against invasions or multi-part enemies. Um, so you can see right there, you fire those and they'll actually go through the enemies and damage all of the enemies. Or if it's something like, say, the destroyer or a b another boss that maybe has multiple parts or a worm enemy or something like that, it'll travel through and damage every part of that enemy or all of those enemies if you're talking multiple. So uh, the velocity is supposedly only 0.5, but you'll notice that these are not affected by gravity, whereas other ones are. So if I just fire regular, uh, see those gradually fall. The Jester's arrows do not. They're not affected by gravity and they will go through unlimited enemies. Uh, so to craft them, it's 10 uh, wooden arrows if you're on the pre-update platforms or 20 wooden arrows if you're on the uh, updated platforms plus a fallen star. And you can see that right here, Jester's arrow. On the updated platform is 20 uh, wooden arrows plus a fallen star. Nice and simple. So again, you can always craft more wooden arrows to combine uh, with those ingredients to make the more advanced arrows. So um, moving right along, another one that you can do in pre-hard mode is the unholy arrows. Uh, which have a base damage of 12, so that's the, the highest yet. If you're on the updated platforms, or only eight actually, if you're on the pre-update platforms, which means the Jester's arrows actually do one point more base damage. Um, they have a 3.4 velocity, they're reasonably fast. So I've got some of those here. And uh, yeah, to make those, you need five wooden arrows and a worm tooth. 
or they are also dropped by the Eye of Cthulhu if you're in a corruption world only. And you can only get worm teeth in corruption worlds as well. So uh, these actually must be crafted at an anvil if you're in a corruption world. So you, you notice as soon as I go to the anvil, I get a couple more options. And uh, they are crafted from five wooden arrows and a worm tooth if you're going to craft them. But you can also buy them. Um, after you've defeated the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu, you can buy them from the arms dealer, assuming you have your arms dealer by then, uh, <clears throat> at night, only at night. He will sell you unholy arrows. So uh, although you can you can only craft them and they're only dropped by the Eye of Cthulhu in Corruption Worlds, you can still buy them if you're in a Crimson World. Uh, but you have to defeat either the, the well, if you're in Crimson World, it's the Brain of Cthulhu <laughs> that uh, allows you to buy them. If you're in Corruption World, you can also buy them after you defeating the Eater of Worlds. So um, now they also have a piercing effect. So you can see they will go through multiple enemies. Uh, you notice, though, that it stopped on the last one because it will only go through up to five enemies so whereas the jester's arrows has an unlimited piercing effect these only go through up to five uh, enemies or parts of bosses or bigger enemies whatever so unlike the jester's arrows it's not unlimited but it does have a higher base damage if you're on an updated platform uh, moving right along, next one that you can get in pre-hard mode on all platforms, in fact the last one you can get on all platforms in pre-hard mode, is the Hellfire Arrows. So these are the most uh, powerful uh, that's not platform specific in pre-hard mode. Uh, they have a base damage of 13 if you're on an updated platform, or 10 if you're on a pre-update platform. Uh, and they have the highest velocity of all arrows in the game actually at 6.5 velocity, which is really fast. So uh, we'll show those in a second here, but um, they explode like grenades upon impact with an area effect that can also damage multiple enemies or parts. It will only like impact once, but it explodes. So boom. Yeah, it's not a big area effect. So you can see it's only, I kind of have to have a lucky shot on these dummies for it to, <laughs> to hit more than one. Uh, but it's kind of like a grenade. Um, I think on the updated platforms you can't hurt yourself with these, whereas on the pre-update platforms you can. So that's something to be aware of as well. Uh, but it's a lot like a, a grenade when it explodes. The crafting recipe is a little bit different depending whether you're on a pre or post update platform as well. But um, it does, like the unholy arrows, it requires an anvil, unlike some of the earlier arrows. So uh, if you're on a pre-update platform, it's 25 wooden arrows plus five torches and one hellstone bar. If you're on a post-update platform, you can ditch the torches and you can make more of them at once. It's 100 wooden arrows plus one hellstone bar. So you'll see that here, 100 wooden arrows and one hellstone bar. I kept one in my inventory just for that. <laughs> and uh, you can also find hellfire arrows in shadow chests and pots in the underworld or after you defeat the Wall of Flesh and get into hard mode, you can buy them from the Demolitionist as well. And they're pretty pla pretty powerful and pretty fast. So a uh, couple that are only available on certain platforms, on mobile and 3DS only, there's, there's one type, which is the Heart Arrows, which you will be able to get uh, from the merchant. You can buy them from the merchant during the Valentine's seasonal event, which only exists on mobile and 3DS. Um, you can also find them in heart shrines if you happen to create a new world during the Valentine's event. That world will have heart shrines in it and you can find them there. Uh, so the heart arrows only do four base damage. They're actually the weakest base damage of all the arrows in the game. But they can stun enemies for up to one and a half seconds which makes them incredibly powerful. Uh, it's actually the best way if you want to kill the dungeon guardian on mobile or 3DS, you'll want to get some of those heart shrine or sorry heart arrows. Um, because you can actually stun the dungeon guardian with those arrows and then just keep pelting it uh, with uh, other weapons or just keep pelting it with those arrows uh, to do enough damage to kill it. In fact, with the dungeon guardian, everything's going to do one damage, so you may as well use those if you have enough of them. Anyway, um, it's also useful against other bosses. It will uh, work against the wall of flesh and most other bosses as well. It, uh, it actually inflicts what's called the stunned debuff, which I think also only exists on those platforms. Uh, and again, stuns them for one and a half seconds. It works against bosses. You can It actually freezes them still. 
So that's very, very powerful. Duke Fishrun is the only boss who is completely immune to it. Um, and the Queen Bee, on the other hand, uh, if you hit the Queen Bee like even once with one of those, the Queen Bee will actually slow down permanently until you uh, defeat her. So Hard Arrows, very powerful if you're on mobile and 3DS. Uh, another one that is only available on the old gen consoles as well as mobile and 3DS, uh, the Sharanga Bow you can get in pre-hard mode and it will turn any arrows into spectral arrows. Uh, spectral arrows are very, very powerful. There's a 25% chance that you can retrieve them uh, after you fire them with the Sharanga Bow and you can also then use them with other bows and other uh, weapons that will fire arrows. Um, spectral arrows are also dropped in hard mode by the Okram boss. Uh, they have a base of 16 damage on the old gen consoles in 3DS and actually 18 damage if you're on mobile. Plus, they inflict the Cursed Inferno debuff, which is the only way to inflict the Cursed Inferno debuff on uh, pre-hard mode. Cursed Inferno um, does 6 damage per second much like uh, the Frostburn, actually no, Frostburn does eight, but uh, six damage per second from the Cursed Inferno is also very, very powerful. And of course those have a much higher base damage to begin with. So that makes them one of the most powerful uh, arrows in the game. And on those platforms, by getting the Sharanga Bow, you can actually uh, get those in pre-hard mode. So uh, that's all the ones that you can get in pre-hard mode, but then we'll move on to hard mode. I'm just going to tell you one quickly, um, first of all, and then we're going to take a little quick break because I need to switch some stuff out. But um, yeah, there's one more that is platform specific, uh, basically close to the beginning of hard mode on old gen, plat uh, old gen consoles, mobile and 3DS only. Again, um, the Vulcan repeater, which you can get in hard mode, uh, turns arrows into Vulcan bolts and these have a 12 beast damage. They explode kind of like the Hellfire arrows and cannot be retrieved uh, to be used with other weapons. So unlike the spectral arrows, you can't um, get them back afterwards. They will never be retrievable. Um, and they're not actually that powerful, but the repeater itself I think is pretty powerful. And uh, yeah, so that one's platform specific. Obviously I don't have it here on PC. Uh, but now we're going to move on to other hard mode arrows and I will be right back as soon as I get everything set up. All right, we're back and I got six more types of hard mode arrows to cover for you. So uh, the next type, probably the first type that you're gonna make in hard mode is the holy arrows, which, uh, you know, kind of the opposite of the unholy arrows uh, based on hallow themed uh, items and a hallow themed type of arrow versus the unholy that's based on the corruption uh, and sort of the crimson. Um, so holy arrows have a base damage of 13 if you're on the updated platforms or six if you're on the pre-updated platforms. So big difference there. Um, uh, the special thing about them is that on impact, they summon two falling stars. They have a 3.5 velocity and the stars can pierce and hit up to two enemies or two parts of one enemy uh, and inflict 50% of the original cumulative damage of the bow plus the arrow uh, each, so effectively you're doubling because there's two of them. Um, you have the original damage plus two stars each at 50% of that damage makes, you know, 200% damage in theory <laughs> in total. So uh, the recipe again is slightly different depending on if you're on a pre-update or post-update platform. Um, like most arrows that are crafted in hard mode, you'll actually have to do it at a hard mode anvil, uh, either a mithril or, or a calcum anvil. Um, if you're on a pre-update platform, it's going to be 45 wooden arrows plus six pixie dust plus one unicorn horn. If you're on post-update like I am, it's uh, 200 wooden arrows plus only three pixie dust and one unicorn horn. So uh, we'll see those here. Holy arrows, you craft 200 of them at a time if you're on an updated platform with pixie dust and unicorn horns. So uh, bam, there we go. And let's test them out. There you go. It's kind of like the effect of the Star Fury. Um, I think it's the Star Cloak actually is a little more similar. Uh, and what makes these so useful is uh, is obviously that effect. If you're against something, uh, again, an invasion event or an enemy that has a lot of parts like the Destroyer particularly, um, then that actually can be very useful. And of course, it depends what bow you can combine it with and so on as well. Uh, but against the Destroyer particularly, these can be actually highly effective. 
uh, because basically it's going to rain down those stars on the whole segment. And the faster you fire, of course, the faster those stars are going to be coming down and the more damage they're going to do. So there you go. And as you can see, they are sometimes recoverable as well. Uh, now another one, now it depends whether you're in a cor corruption or a crimson world, uh, which one of the next two you're going to be able to uh, craft normally. There's cursed arrows, which have a base damage of 17. And uh, if, that, if you're on an updated platform or it's 14, if you're on a pre-update platform, they inflict the Cursed Inferno debuff and have a four velocity. Um, so it's similar to the old gen and mobile specific spectral arrows, but uh, these are available a little bit later and they're available on all platforms, but only in Corruption Worlds uh, because you need the Cursed Flame to craft them. So... They're crafted if you're on a pre-update platform from 35 wooden arrows, or if you're on a post-update platform, you do 150 at a time wooden arrows uh, plus one Cursed Flame. So if we go over here, um, we want this one, 150 wooden arrows and one Cursed Flame makes 150 of these, or uh, same thing, but 45 arrows in and out <laughs> if you're on a pre-update platform. Now, if you're in a Crimson World, uh, you get a different one, which is the Icker Arrow. It's basically the uh, same crafting idea, except you have Icker in place of um, Cursed Flame. Uh, these work a little differently, though. They have a base damage of 16 on the updated platforms or 15 on pre-update, which is interesting. It's one less on updated platforms or it's one more on pre-update platforms. But um, instead of the Cursed Inferno debuff, uh, which does damage per second, they inflict the Icker debuff, which uh, actually lowers enemy defense. Um, they have a 4.25 velocity, just slightly faster. And uh, again, if you're on a pre-update platform, it's 35 arrows at a time. Or if you're on a post-update, it's 150 with one uh, Icker in the mix either way. So we'll make some of those. Um, actually, I didn't actually show you the Cursed Inferno. So let's just show you one and then the other. So Cursed Inferno, again, as you can see, or well, Cursed Arrows that inflict the Cursed Inferno. That's what that looks like. And you can see it lasts actually a while, uh, which is part of what makes them a little more powerful, arguably. Um, but if you're on a Crimson World, you'll have this Icker one instead. And it doesn't actually show um, like that wall of flame kind of thing, but it lowers the enemy defense for a certain amount of time. So it actually is incredibly useful against bosses particularly because bosses have high defense. So uh, the Icker debuff will actually lower their defense and allow you to do a lot more damage to them. Uh, yeah, and otherwise it's a, it's a kind of similar thing, but depends which type of world you have. So moving right along again, um, we're going to get into the Chlorophyte arrows. So Chlorophyte arrows, uh, obviously... Um, available a little bit later in hard mode after you can get some Chlorophyte. They have 16 base damage on all platforms, which makes them one of the most powerful in terms of base damage. Uh, and they ricochet once when hitting blocks, so they'll actually bounce. Um, so you make those from one Chlorophyte bar. If you're on a pre-update platform, you'll only get 50 arrows per Chlorophyte bar. You'll notice there's no wooden arrows involved here. Uh, if you're on a pre-update platform, it's simply one Chlorophyte bar, you get 50. If you're on an update platform, you get 150 from the same bar. Uh, signal bar. Uh, so these are pretty powerful, but Chlorophyte is not always easy to get. Um, chlorophyte can be farmed. I did do a guide on Chlorophyte farming. Um, so that's always an option. Uh, so, you know, it's up to you whether you can grab enough Chlorophyte, whether you want to put up enough work to make a Chlorophyte farm. Um, these do not actually, although they have a high base damage, they do not work well with bows and repeaters that fire multiple arrows at once because of the way piercing works in the game. Only one uh, arrow will usually hit the target because there's kind of like an invincibility frame. Uh, so usually one will hit and the other ones won't if they're all supposed to hit at the same time. So that's kind of a big downside for it. Uh, but let's have a look. You can see, and they are like fairly well affected by gravity. And you'll notice just as they will ricochet off of one block and then hit an enemy, they will also go through one enemy and hit a second. Same idea. Um, if I can, yeah, see, I kind of, if I hit the floor, or I think I hit the teleporter there. Yeah, it'll actually bounce back. <laughs> um, and sorry, I should have zoomed in in the first half of the video, but uh, I did zoom in a little bit now. I didn't want to zoom in too much because you need to be able to see all this. Anyway, um, the other next, uh, the last actually, 
type of arrow that you can get in hard mode that is available on all platforms is the Venom arrows. And these have a slightly higher base damage uh, of 17, again, on all platforms. That's actually the highest base damage of any arrows in the game. Uh, and they inflict the Venom debuff, which is kind of like the Cursed Inferno and um, Poison and on fire and stuff. It does uh, damage per second again. Uh, high damage per second. Um, but these are only available after defeating Plantera. It's uh, 35 wooden arrows and one vial of venom, which you have to buy from your witch doctor NPC, who only shows up after you defeat Plantera. So I went ahead and bought a couple vials of venom here. And again, you'll need to do this at your um, hard mode anvil. And it's 35 wooden arrows and one vial of venom. Make some of those. Uh, the downside to this, although it's the highest base damage in the game, um, the lack of any other effects other than the um, Venom debuff means that other arrows are often more effective simply because uh, a lot of enemies are immune to this Venom debuff. You can see the dummies aren't. <laughs> That's what that uh, looks like when it's effective. But um, a lot of enemies are actually immune to Venom. So that means in a lot of cases that you'll actually be better off with other uh, arrows. You can always try it and see if it works. <laughs> if you see this this effect of them losing damage, um, that little bubbling around them, uh, that means it works. You can always look up, of course, on the wiki which ones are immune and which ones aren't as well. But a lot of enemies, especially a lot of the bosses, are immune to that venom effect. And unfortunately, that kind of um, lessens the usefulness of these. They are also the highest base damage. Um, now, the last and final arrows that we are going to cover and I'm going to put on a little show with these, is the Luminite arrows. The Luminite arrows are only available on the updated platforms, the PC 1.3 onward, uh, Xbox One, PS4. Uh, they will presumably become available on mobile when that gets the update. They have only, let's say, it's still high, only 15 base damage, uh, but they also fire a secondary projectile. So I have some of these. You can see 15 base damage. Um, and basically, they will fire after like, it's about a one second delay, they'll fire a little like beam thing as well. So first, I'm just going to show you that. See? But a second later, there's like a second thing there. And you can also see there is a piercing effect with these as well. They will hit up to four enemies or up to four segments or pieces. Um, <clears throat> so it's like a laser-like secondary shot there. Uh, plus... There's the piercing effect, so it will go through. Um, it will hit up to four. Uh, the wiki says five, but I see four. <laughs> and uh, so that makes them actually quite powerful because you're doing, it's, it's like you're shooting two shots per arrow, even with a basic, this is with a wooden bow. So even with a wooden bow, you still get the double um, shot effect. Now, of course, you can increase that by using a better bow, and that's where we're going to put on a little bit of show. Um, but first, let me tell you how to craft these. So uh, you do need to defeat the Moon Lord to be able to craft uh, Luminite arrows. And once you do that, you'll do that at the Ancient Manipulator, which is the only one that uh, in hard mode, of all the hard mode added arrows, uh, of course, the pre-hard mode ones you can still craft, and you'll craft them as you did in pre-hard mode. But out of all the ones that are only available in hard mode, it's the only one that's not at the Anvil. It's at the Ancient Manipulator. And it's just one Luminite bar gives you 333 of these arrows. So you only need three Luminite bars um, to make a full stack of 999. So, uh, you know, Luminite obviously you, isn't that easy to come by because you have to defeat the Moon Lord. But if you're farming the Moon Lord, you're going to have a ton of the stuff. And uh, you'll be able to create a ton of arrows because each bar creates 333. Um, and again, that's your Ancient Manipulator. Now... Let's uh, make this a little more interesting. So obviously, uh, this is just a, the first hard mode um, repeater. And you can see, I can do a lot of damage if I'm firing quickly. And there's not only the arrows going quickly, um, but also the bolts, the laser-like uh, projectile that comes after it. Um, so yeah, you can do a ton of, a ton of damage even with a, a basic repeater. But that's not all. <laughs> If you have, basically, the ultimate bow in the game is the Phantasm. And I do, of course, have one of those. Uh, I have a murderous Phantasm, no less. Um, and you can see, a single shot with the Phantasm actually fires four of these. And in turn, each one of those four. So if you have a 
any type of um, bow or repeater that fires more than one shot at once. That also means that each of those additional shots gets that additional bolt as well. So um, with the Phantasm firing four, then for each shot, <laughs> I'm effectively getting eight hits. And uh, not only that, the Phantasm actually has a 66% chance, a two-thirds chance not to use any ammo. So um, you can basically do a ton of damage with very little ammunition. You can see, if you look carefully at my, uh, my little counter there, um, it's not ticking down a lot when I'm doing this. <laughs> and look how much damage that's doing. I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds thousands when you when you add it all up it's thousands of dps and that i'm not even wearing any armor right now so i can go ahead and put on my vortex armor and uh, i'll put my celestial shell back in there and it's incredible incredible damage and you can see in the the more uh, brighter orange all the critical hits as well you can of course use tons and tons of boosters i can use a sniper scope i can use a destroyer emblem and other types of emblems um so yeah Basically, this is what I found after I defeated the Moon Lord with guns. I find, personally, the Phantasm with uh, with Luminite arrows is kind of like the ultimate thing for, for doing tons and tons of damage as a ranged character. So, hope you liked the video. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.